Hello everyone, and welcome to another Transformers review. And this review was requested by SMS number one, which is Dave. Uh, he saw my haul vid, which I did last, and asked if I would do a review on Long Arm, which is the Transformer you see in front of you. Now I don't have his, obviously his packaging or instructions or anything like that, because obviously I picked him up at the boot fair. Um, but generally speaking, you know, he is complete with all these parts and he's in pretty tidy condition. Um, have a little look at his alt mode first. Now to start with obviously his tow truck. Now he's based along, in the first movie, the tow truck which towed the legless bumblebee around shooting Decepticons. So yeah, a reasonable representation of that vehicle. Um, they have brought out a couple of other versions. There's a slightly worn version which has got some sort of uh, black sort of dirty marks on the back end around there. Uh, I think it's also they've changed the name of the, uh, the actual towing company as well. But uh, other than that, that's it's basically the same version. I think that came in a four pack of uh, Transformers. Um, and there was also another version which did come with a sort of just a plastic representation of the broken or damaged bumblebee and that also had a little Michaela figure sort of inside but not actually like a human alliance one it's like a I think she was just sort of moulded in like if she was driving so this is like the individual packaged version uh, he's a deluxe size figure um, but you know, it's sort of like it's not the biggest of the deluxes, I have to admit. Um, but yeah, he's got some reasonable little features in vehicle mode. You've obviously got like the clear plastic lights on the top. Uh, the jib of the towing bar does go up and down, and you can swing the hook part, and that's actually a little bit poseable on the end as well. Um, obviously, all three wheeling wheels which are just solid moulded plastic. Now there are a few little downsides which I think they could have just sort of picked out a bit better detail on this mode. Uh, things like the mirrors, they could have put a little bit of silver paint on the back of them to make them actually look like mirrors rather than just bits of white plastic sticking out the side. A bit of a paint app on the wheels, you know, bring out the centres, make them silver, you know, either painted silver or chrome them would have been quite nice. And things like, you know, no number plate, front or rear. I mean, for a tow truck, that's an MOT foul anyway. So, he wouldn't even be allowed on the road to pick up damaged cars. So, in that sort of way, there are, you know, some little details with it. Which just sort of let down the old mode a little bit. Even things like a little bit, you know, light apps on the back could have been painted. A bit of, like, the fluorescent markings, like, for when you're towing, you need sort of, like, some... Uh, like hazard sort of like stripes if you think back to like the G1 hoist figure now he was covered in sort of yellow striping things like that even on like the jib of the crane part would have been nice you've got the molded in marks how difficult would it have been for him to actually put a little paint app in there again just would have give it a little bit more colour and pick things out a little bit nicer but anyway, that's pretty much his old mode sort of covered. Um, also, I would say ground clearance on the wheels is a little bit suspect. Not so much like for being accurate to a vehicle, but for actual wear and tear on the actual uh, robot itself. In vehicle mode, it wouldn't take a lot to scratch these parts if a kid's been playing with it and driving it over sort of like rough ground outside or something if they were playing in the garden. So a little bit, you know, you have to watch that, especially being on white plastic, because if it's scratched, you're going to have to repaint it if it's sort of been badly marked up. But other than that, a reasonable sort of representation. I think it's a Dodge truck going by the grill. But yeah, okay. Anyway, getting to his transformation. Flip the jib of the crane out of the way. Get that tucked out other way and fold the lights up and sort of swing that up and together out of the way then you want to detach the two black parts they unclip in the center 
and fold them out and that loosens up the whole back end flip up the doors a little bit like Goldwing sort of style like the DeLorean from the Back to the Future film and that releases these two clips on the sides that then allows you to turn the side down and around on both sides and then you can fold the white back part, it's, it's a little bit confusing, the white back part is hinged on this black piece of plastic there and that hinges around there and then you can fold small back like bumper round like so. So all sort of like concertinas together like that. Now again doing the same on this side and I'll show you it from the top this time. Fold the two white sections together and then fold the black part out like that. And that's basically his upper arms done. Now at this stage you have to turn the checker plate of the like back uh, truck bed round and that reveals his hand on his forearm and you do have to do this on the other arm but as you can see when he's in vehicle mode his weapon is stowed up the middle of the underside of the body of the truck so you've got to swing that up and out of the way first before you can swing the checker plate round now that is basically his arms transformed you have got a little bit of mucking around with the weapon to actually fold it all sort of like in line like so huge gun I have to admit on a figure this size it's a little bit oversized even the mech tech weapons are a little bit better proportion than this one now as I say at this stage you've now got his arms freed up at his back you can fold up the checker plate what goes behind the cab and bring the figure up like so and then from this joint up here which would be the shoulder joint you need to swing the whole arm assembly round to the sides and I'll show you it from this angle like so and that folds his arms out and obviously you get to see his face now with the front section which is obviously his legs you need to release it where it's tucked under the windscreen and this sort of all concertinas out and you've got the ball joints at the hip it's sort of all concertinas out like so and this is obviously from the back gear now the feet and the legs are a bit weird now I think they could have done something much better with this and I'll just go into this first these do obviously split apart as well they peg together these front bonnet sections I think should have been able to fold round to the back of the leg because you've got three sort of toe sections in this leg and if I lift that one out of the way I'll show you what they are you've got two rear back ones which if I can get this one to come out it's a little bit fiddly so you've got two there at the back and one at the front which is here now as far as I can tell the official way of this transformation is to have his bonnet turned down just got a, it's a very fiddly little transformation on his feet you have to effectively if I can get this to go, that's it he's almost like fold his foot out like so and you end up with a huge foot now it will stand like that um, you sort of got, that's it push it down like so and you get all three toes are touching and the bonnets touching so you get a foot and a leg like that but I think if that part had swung past these toes or been hinged around to the side so it could swing around the back you'd get to see a lot more of the leg detail and it wouldn't look so ridiculous because you could still you know you could have spun these round and had the two toes at the front and one at the back as heel spur so it's a little bit of an oddball leg assembly what I actually do since I've got it and I've had a good look at it is swing the whole front section back up 
and bring the single toe out to the front and actually have a leg like that. Now you do lose the nice orange detail on the front of the leg, but I think he looks a little bit more compact. So it's a matter of opinion which way you want to do the legs. I'm going to actually show him in this way because I think it actually appears a little bit more in scale. So I'll just get the other leg sorted out exactly the same way and just sort of tuck it around like so. Sorry if this is not the most entertaining bit of the review, but it is a fiddly thing to do. But I actually find that looks a little bit more in scale. And it's a shame the two, like I say, the two toes at the front would have looked <coughs> excuse me, much better. But at least his legs look a little bit more in proportion to the rest of his body. Now the only thing obviously left to do, because he looks like he's surrendering at the minute, is to swing his arms down and round. Now, in general, he's got pretty good poseability. Uh, there's a lot of ball joints, a lot of hinge joints. Um, his hands can be swung in and out. You've got elbow articulation on two uh, screw joints there, and obviously ball joint at the shoulder, so reasonable articulation in the arms. Only hindered really by the fact of the checker plate on the side. But it's not bad. Now on the other arm, he's greatly hindered by the fact that he's got this huge cannon. Um, you can tuck it under his arm like so to get it back out of the way a little bit. Or, which is a little bit more sensible, is put it up and over his shoulder if you can get it to turn that way. But, in general speaking, it is huge and a bit of a pain in the neck to be honest. And you can't take it out unless you want to get a screwdriver out because if I can show you there it's screwed to his hand so if it had just been pegged in you could take it off and it, to be honest if it had been removable you know why not make it a shoulder cannon and make it a little bit more sort of manageable as a figure because obviously if you've got that on display you need a fair bit of room to have that stuck out the front of him um, so in that respect, not the greatest of designs as far as sort of being able to play with it. Um, I'd imagine most kids would have sort of got a bit hacked off with the fact that you can't actually, other than having him in this sort of mode with the gun sticking out, you can't really do much else with him, with, especially with that arm, obviously, because you, you can't take the gun off unless you want to get a screwdriver out anyway. Um, other than that, there are a few other little sort of things. I mean, he's got quite nice moulding detail. I quite like the fact that he carried on the checker plate sort of style on his chest, which does look quite nice. Um, the face app is pretty good and quite well moulded, and that. And it also does have light piping. Uh, if I can get my torch, and if it's bright enough, I don't know if it will in the daylight. But you do get some light application through his eyes, which is quite nice. It's quite nice when they keep that going. Um, arms, not brilliant. It would have been quite nice if that hand had been able to actually hold something. Um, especially being that he's sort of along the lines of, say, like the old hoist character. It would have been quite nice if that had included some tools that he's supposed to be repairing. Same the other Autobots, a little bit like Ratchet, you know, and Hoist and Wheeljack. It would have been a, another little feature to have had some bits and bobs like that. Um, but generally, not a bad robot mode. A little bit stumpy. Now, for a deluxe, I would say it's a bit on the small side. Now, if I can dig one out quick, if you get, say, actually a good sort of partner figure to show with it. If you get like a deluxe bumblebee, and this is like the battle sort of damaged one, as you can see, he's a fair bit taller than long arm. So they kind of went down on scale, and bearing in mind this is the guy who's supposed to be towing him around, it kind of don't work. You'd expect him to be a bigger figure. Um, so a little bit in that way, it's a little bit downsized. Now, I know a lot of people said, you know, the Hasbro are cutting down on size, scale, or figures, even things which are supposed to be 
if I bring shockwave in, the Voyager class. Considering that's like another size class, he's not that big. You know, he, he's definitely getting smaller on these sort of scales. Um, obviously the biggest being leader class, which are again going to be bigger than most of these figures. But uh, yeah, I think the scale wise they could have made this guy a little bit taller. Maybe even by changing those leg designs it would have made him a little bit taller. And therefore, again, might have made him that little bit more imposing as a, an actual robot. But other than that, generally it's quite nice. Um, obviously over time you're going to have to watch that the white plastic don't fade, but I don't know if that's going to affect the newer Transformers in the same way as it does G1. Um, one thing I would point out, and this would be more for the older fans, I do find his face very reminiscent of the Marvel Comics Straxus character. Now, to be fair, that head mould, you could easily use that mould again to do a Straxus head. I know they did bring out a um, sort of version of Straxus, I think using with the bludgeon. I think it was a tank uh, mould. But to be fair, they could have almost, I mean a recolour of this could have almost been a Straxus, though obviously I don't think he'd be that helpful in being a tow truck. I kind of get the idea of why they used him as a tank, but that head sculpt is very similar to a Straxus character. But anyway, that's just a little thing that I sort of like thought of when I was looking at him. Obviously this guy's all I bought because he was helping Bumblebee. And obviously he's got his little logo on the top, which I think is the only logo actually on this one. Which again is a little unusual because usually they have some vehicle sort of signage that they're an Autobot, but there you go. It's a little bit different. Um, other little bits to point out. Nice moulding detail up on the other underside of the checker plate panels. Um, these do have a habit of snapping off. Um, you often see sort of damaged versions of these knocking around with quite a few bits missing. Obviously another sort of fatal thing where you're going to see these figures if you're picking them out second hand is going to be because of they're all ball jointed limbs you're going to see ones with missing bits. But it was also quite nice that he did come with his missile which again would be something you've got to watch out for that that might be missing. And I would say one warning as well this is launched by the little button underneath and this thing really does go it's probably the, one of the most powerful of the transformer weapons I've come across in a long time. It will nigh on short shoot across the room. Um, but yeah, you, that's one one thing. Well, I was transforming this earlier back to its vehicle mode. It did launch past my face and disappear for a while, and that again dig it out. But uh, yeah. Anyway, that's. Uh, just a little safety warning I suppose. I don't want anyone to end up with one of them stuck in their head. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty generally a nice figure. Um, not one I would have paid I suppose the full asking price for but if you can pick one up cheap second hand it's well worth picking up. He's actually not too bad for a movie line figure and Ball joints seem to be reasonably stable. Um, obviously, you can improve that with a little bit of super glue, but uh, these ones actually do seem that little bit more sturdy than some of the other robots. Anyway, I'm waffling on now, so I'll end the review and I shall see you again. I hope this was alright for you, Dave, and you've enjoyed it. And it's nice to see you doing a robot review, even if you did have to get drunk to get one out. Um, but I am enjoying your Star Trek uh, painting as well, uh, new model making. It's uh, quite interesting to see somebody else's sort of like other little hobbies, and also the fact of the detail you've gone into is quite impressive as well. So anyway, that's a little review for SMS number one. Hope you enjoyed it, and hope everyone else enjoys it. Feel free to comment. Uh, feel free to subscribe if it's the first uh, film you've seen. Uh, please feel free to go back through the, like, the library of reviews I've done. I've had people ask if I've uh, reviewed or I'm going to review 
a certain figure and I might have done it way back so feel free to go through and see if there's anything else you're interested in and feel free like I say comment subscribe um, like whatever you want to do and I shall see you again for another Transformers review thanks for watching